Hey guys, welcome to the Tyler and Neil Explain Everything podcast. I'm Neil, his friend Tyler. Tyler is on the phone. With Apple. With My Apple Pencil stopped working. How long, iPad. how long you been on hold there, Tyler? I've been on the phone for 24 minutes and 48 seconds. Seems like a bit excessive. And they're starting me over with a new person. Oh, man. But I think they said it should be one minute on hold uh-huh. and then two minutes at the most on the other one. That sounds great. So I thought we should go ahead and start recording and then we could do a podcast about it. I think it sounds great. So I, I like, think it's going to work, man. I like what you did. Like what you did, you little... Hey, guys. Welcome to the Tyler and Neil Explain Everything podcast. This is the second intro for the same podcast. However... It was delivered by me. I think we should... Uh, I think we should do... <laughs> what's uh, what, what's the, the guy on uh, on Parks and Rec, the, the news guy? And this is an introduction uh, <laughs> delivered by me. Delivered by me to you right now. Yeah. He just delivers... Can't think of his name right now. It's Tom. Well, our listeners... Tom. Hardy. Our listeners are definitely thinking of who that is. Yeah. You know his name. You know my favorite? They hung up on me. <laughs> they just hung up? <laughs> serious. They hung up on me. Are you, were they talking to you? It, no, it was, um, it was whole music. And so. And they hung up. Yeah. Which is good because I was blasting music in one ear. Oh I can hear you gosh. in the other ear and I'm trying to talk in a microphone to a podcast. I think it was, it was doomed from the start. It was like that movie with Mark Wahlberg, The Perfect Storm. Yeah. Wasn't that Mark Wahlberg? This is really going to be hard on my son. His... Remember he was saying that when he, yeah, was, he, when went, he was drowning. <laughs> yeah, he didn't make that sound. What if he made... <laughs> I don't think he made that sound. Insert poot noises oh in every gosh. dramatic scene. It's like, never let go, Jack. And he's like... <laughs> and then he falls down. <laughs> he goes underwater. Oh in Titanic. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay, Neil. Um, I was thinking today that we could talk... Purred happily. By the way, is his heard happily. Wow, Bird they were really happily. still thinking about that. I was. Said no I ever. wasn't able to think about anything else. So today, what are we talking about, man? We're going to talk about how to nail an interview. Oh my goodness, Neil! <laughs> uh, just so people feel like they they can they feel like they can trust us, because sometimes we might jump into a topic, maybe rhymes with schmessling, and we don't know what we're talking about. <laughs> so what? <laughs> Can we say to reassure the good people at home that we're not going to steer them astray and they're going to walk into an interview and look like a Dunder Mifflin? They're calling me back. Go. Okay. Uh, the very first thing that I would think actually sets us up for credibility would be our intro music by Joseph Tilly. Well, we're in, we're in it now. Uh, we're in it? We're back yeah, in it? Oh, in man, it. that music was so good. Yeah. Did you Joseph. know we did the music? Fun fact about Joseph, he's my mentor. <laughs> A lot of people don't know that. I, I didn't know that either. Yeah. How, how, can we, how can we set the people at ease and let them know that we are probably the foremost experts on how to na- I didn't say my words right there. I was a former social sports on how to nail your interview. That's a great question, Neil. How many jobs have you had, Tyler? Um, in my like, well, I've had a lot in my life. Okay, I, yes. I worked since age of like twelve or thirteen. Was first like paid gigs. Like mom's like, take that, out the trash. That's illegal. That was before twelve or thirteen. Okay. Okay, these are under the table. Tell me if this is legit. Okay. They paid me three dollars an hour to work in a warehouse, and they paid me in an envelope with cash. Is that legit? Hundred percent. Okay, sick. Then yeah, since thirteen. That's actually 100 percent true. Everything I just said there is true. Oh my! Uh, it we're was all going to jail. Marine products. We're going to jail. Uh, so I would say career-wise, like if we're talking post college, that's what I'll count. Like I've worked my whole life, but post college, okay, I've I'm in my third job. I've, every five years, I transition to a new location. However, I've never had the same job three years in a row. I've always like transitioned to something else within the organization. Wow. Yeah, it's whatever. That's a little but, scary. How about you? Or how are you on your current? Oh, I love it. Okay. That's it's great. Good. That's good. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I've I had, I would say, it, not even exaggerating, in excess of 40 different jobs. Oh, we're talking like lifetime? Yes. I'm probably, are we counting freelance? No. I'd probably say like 20. Okay. A solid 20. So I'm twice as good as you are. Or twice as bad. I think twice as bad. <laughs> depends on how you look at it. Yeah, that's good. That's You're probably right. All right. What was your very first job? Clock in, clock out job. It was working in a warehouse, pulling products for Marine Wholesale. So I was the middleman between like factories overseas and dealerships. They sent it to a warehouse for a wholesale Marine products company. Uh-huh. And I would hand it off and uh, box it and 
packages, ship it out. How how long did you work there? Uh, every summer except for two from ages 13 to 23. Oh, wow. Yeah. That was a commitment. Yeah. Well, my, my dad was one of the owners. Okay. So that helps. That helped me get in there. That's good. Yeah. How about you? First job. First job lasted 38 seconds. Oh, goodness. It sounds like a bro- job my brother would have had. <laughs> it's oh, <laughs> He got actually, fired a lot. It sounds like a job my brother would have had. Yeah. Uh, we I, I got a job at Wendy's. Okay. And uh, they, like- did, they did not give you full uniforms. This okay. is the very first clock in, clock out job that I ever had. Okay. I clocked in. They did not give you the pants. They just said, wear blue pants. Oh, that's And they gave specific. you a shirt and a hat. I, will, I clocked in, and the lady said, you want to, let's actually role play this out. Okay. G- give, me a, give me on the clock for 38 seconds. Okay. Hey, welcome to Wendy's. Uh, we're so happy you're here. Uh, this is Neil. He's hey, new. Hey, guys. My name is Neil. I'm here. It's my first day. I'm really looking forward to learning from you guys and you guys mentoring me along with Joseph Tilly. It's going to be great. And okay. then and then the lady goes, "Hey Neil, are, why are you wearing dungarees?" And I'm like, "I don't even know what dungarees are." She's like, "You're wearing blue jeans." I said, "I don't, ma'am. I don't. Even, I'm not wearing blue jeans. These are Dockers." She goes, "There was blue jeans. You can't wear those. Those are against the rules." I said, "Ma'am, I don't, okay, it's my very first day." She goes, "Clock out. Go home. Change." I said, okay, I'll do that. And, and I, he never came back. Yep, clocked out. Went home on the answering machine. That's how long ago this was. Yeah. On the answering machine was a message from McDonald's offering me a job with full uniforms. What? Book it. I'm in. And you said, Wendy who? 30, 30, I'm a seconds. Ronald guy. Yeah. <laughs> 38 seconds. Uh, knowing how to interview is extremely important, but it is not just a face-to-face interview that happens anymore. There are multiple layers. phone interviews. Oh, yeah. There are video interviews. Well, honestly, most of the time you have to digitally apply, so that's an interview within y- itself. Yep. That yeah. gets you on the table. Absolutely. And so, as far as interviewing, like being the interviewee, the interviewee, Interviewer, sorry. The interviewee is the person getting interview interviewed. Interview-esque. Interview-esque, squire. Hello, my name is Charles Catechithan the uh, third. So, uh, that was dumb, sorry. I I have interviewed probably over 200 people. Oh, wow, jobs. you have given interviews. I've given interviews. Whoa. Probably over 200 different interviews. Worst interviewer you ever oh, saw. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> so, I've got these. Okay. okay. So, we tried this. Most of them are for education, like teaching jobs. We had one cat. Come in. One cat. We marked off 45 minutes for these interviews, okay? Oh. Yes, ma'am. Hey, how are you? I'll just finish out the rest of the story. Five minutes later. True true story. Tyler turned in a resume when uh, he first started uh, attending New Life Church. He, he gave us a resume, and it was a DVD of his greatest hits. I am not making that up. And also a portfolio, and I think there were a lot of hand-drawn drawings inside there for a position that he definitely would not have wanted, but he really, really liked uh, our church, and he wanted to uh, be a part of what we were doing. And he set that in, and I watched every video on his DVD, which I feel like he even made like a cover art for it. Uh, he, it, it was, it was incredible, and that is. That that's the the rest of the story, and it's true. Two hours later, and they also they they brought in a lot of. Hey guys, Amish welcome culture. to the Explain Everything podcast with Tyler and Neil. Uh, hey if guys. you're just joining us, Neil's been kind of out of commission for a few minutes. Literally just blacked out. What? Gave a monologue Where for am I? 17 minutes. Where am I? On what happened? How to do an interview, and I th- I thought to myself, Neil, that was really good. But I think we could make it even worse if I would join in the conversation. And I thought to myself, self, you really shouldn't do that. Really self. shouldn't do that. That's you... my favorite thing when somebody says, I thought to myself, self, you shouldn't do this. <laughs> you know what? I, I went through a phase about eight years ago where I would go, I thought to myself, Toila, you should do that. Because I <laughs> tell people that I talk to myself in a British accent. Do you? No, but I used to make that joke thinking oh. it was funny. Little did I know, mm-hmm. people hated me. Hey, guys. Okay, so I have... I think where we left off was I had talked to you. Did we leave off or did we finish up? Are we done here? <laughs> I would love to keep talking about it. I tell really do more. love tell this. Me more. Okay. Tell, tell me more. Tell me more. Tell me. I'm going to cut out literally the whole part that I wasn't talking. Is that okay? Dang it. I'm going to make it a special on our Patreon. Patreon.com slash uh, explain everything. All right. Not uh, explain everything. Tyler. <laughs> Gosh, I knew I was going to mess up. <laughs> Patreon. P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot uh-huh. com slash explain uh-huh. everything. The entire conversation, which I think at some point features my iPad serial number, if you want to just go ahead and steal my iPad and hack Whoa. in, uh, it's all available there. Go check out the Patreon. It's Neil's literal 15-minute monologue 
on how to do an interview. That's more than behind the scenes. That is the scene. That is the real scene. So here's our second version of this with me. Hi, Tyler Tarver. At Tyler Tarver. Holla at me on Instagram. <laughs> Always plug. Oh so I have been the interviewer for over 200 interviews. And so wow. I've gotten the chance, most of them for education. Um, okay. You know, we've done different roles in a school, but most of those were education roles. A lot of teachers, some administrators, uh, paraprofessionals, a lot of different roles. And I've gotten the chance to, you know, be someone who's just in the room, kind of just asking questions if I wanted to, watching some. I didn't even say a word, whole interview. Wow. Shook their hand when they came in, shook their hand when they walked out. But a lot of them, I was the person leading the interview, and okay. I would get to ask the questions, and we'd go through a set of, you know, procedures. Uh, the way most of our interviews go, just to give you a heads up, was they'd come in, little, you know, cordial hello how are you that's how we talk when they come in interviews that's hello. incredible and that's uh, how you know who's who then they would present we had them do like a short presentation on themselves so it was like about me personal like work school like experience and then like that guy from there. memento could do a lot of presentations on himself He's yeah literally like right here it's right my here. arm this is where, right here's where my elbow is but it also tells me that i need to not trust you you're in trouble now mister <laughs> okay christopher sorry. nolan sorry. uh and then <laughs> He says the director's name. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and they would do a presentation. The reason we did this, one, you're getting to know about them, but also it gave them a chance to present. If there's one thing everybody should know about, it's themselves. And so, yes. you know, if that, you know the material. And so we get a chance to see them and how they teach and present and conduct a room. And so we take a lot mm. from that presentation. And then they sit down and we do questions for about 20, 25 minutes. How long is the presentation? Uh, usually we try to tell them, 10 to 15 minutes. Wow. Now you were asking earlier about my worst interview. So yes. I needed that context beforehand. Okay, got it. So worst interview, this cat comes in and we have 45 minutes blocked. It's like every 45 minutes, a new person's walking in. Oh, wow. He he gave a presentation for about 35 minutes. Okay. Then he came in, started talking, sat down and started passing around all these artifacts to show why he is good for the job. There were newspaper clippings from 30 years ago oh my where gosh. he was mentioned about a, something he did. I don't want to get too specific because it would show like the role. Wow. He's sitting there. At one point, he teared up because he started telling a story about something that had happened, but he didn't explain the story. So it was really just him tearing up at the start of a story and then changing the subject. Oh, my. Um, during the presentation, there was an audio clip that came up on one of the slides and started playing background music that was too loud, so you couldn't hear him. Oh, my And it gosh. kept playing for about a seven or was eight minutes. Was it the Indiana Jones theme song? Uh, if it had, he'd have gotten the job. <laughs> I was like, excuse me, sir. We'll stop this here. You can have my job. Fun fact. He And he talked. He We could not get him out of the room. It, fi it took him an hour and a half to get finished. Oh, my gosh. I literally had to stand up, he start through putting his stuff two interviews oh. i had to start getting his stuff and i was putting it in his folder for him while he's still sitting down talking and i was like thank you so much literally packing his stuff up for him oh my the interview two interviews after him a guy came in and he was talking about how he interviewed for a job about 15 years before that said he should have thought he should have gotten the job i don't know how he got on this but started talking about how he should have gotten the job the guy that got the job instead of him he told us a little bit about him, and I was, and he goes, well, I found out later they didn't really like him there. I checked on ratemyteacher.com. Oh, my. He didn't get it, or he wasn't very good at it, blah, blah, blah. I did the math. The long interview guy yeah. was the guy that got the job over him. No. Dead serious. From like almost two decades before. Wow, they and miss each other by that much. I think they tr I think they're a traveling act. They, oh, they, they oh, do it's vaudeville. this show That's, and we were filmed and I'm gonna be on were, some twenty thirty two, I'm on a TV show by Man. these two cats. That's amazing. It was really good. What are the odds of that? I mean one in a million. <laughs> Pretty good odds. Neil, how about you? What was the worst interview you ever sat through that you um, can talk about? That I, oh wow yeah so that's the tricky part is you know when it's like hr and all that kind of stuff you uh well so i had a guy that, that interviewed for a position and he um he didn't tell us everything on the application and resume and all that sort of thing i said is there anything that you left out like you it's always really good to say is there anything you left out here that maybe if we found out that way just like you're kind of giving him a chance to come uh, clean yeah well uh he's like yeah i gotta be honest with you man i like you a lot I think uh, I think I probably should have put down there my jail time, and it was multiple jail time. Question: 
and real he, jail time, or was oh, it like he was playing Monopoly and he le, like couldn't roll doubles? Legit, <laughs> legit jail oh. time. Oh, that's worse. Yeah, and it was multiple times. Oh and he gosh. was, and I was like, so tell me one of the reasons why you want to get this job. He's like, I, I need the responsibility of this so I don't end up back in the clink. Back in the clink. He did not <laughs> say clink. Did he say clink? <laughs> no, I just did. Uh, but that was like he. I was like, oh wow. So you definitely left that off. He said, yeah. Well, I really appreciate your honesty. I think. Question. Mm-hmm. When he brought up jail time, did he hit play on the computer and start playing Indiana Jones theme song? Da, 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 da. No. It's the same guy. Oh, man. Nope. He's uh, blinding one eye. Wow. Oh, oh, there it is. See, Biscuit <laughs> quote that I love. It's good. All right, you want to run through some do's and don'ts of interview etiquettes? Absolutely. All right. Fun fact, also, yes. one time we had a person, uh, we had to stop the interview because they almost passed out. Oh, because they were nervous? Yes, they got so nervous. They so I, they said, I think I'm about to pass out. So we had to stop the interview, get them something to drink and eat, chat to them for about 10 or 15 minutes. Oh, Fun did fact. you hire them? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because we knew about them beforehand. Okay. And they had been like, they had been there for a while. Wow. Student teaching. And we were like, they're really good. And so it really didn't matter. One of, the, one of the reasons why it is important to do a good interview is because if you're typically the person who's interviewing, that also means that if things don't go well, you are also probably the person who has to let them go. And that oh, is yeah. miserable. Yeah. That is very, very difficult. Wait, you're talking about like the people who call and say, hey, you didn't get the job? Or are you talking about like no, if you hire them, then you have to let yeah, them go? Yeah, if you hire them and it doesn't oh, go yeah. well, that that feels miserable. Yeah, and I've been I've worked for people that they take on that responsibility. I've worked for some that are like, no, they, you're going to do it because I don't want to do it. Yeah, They'll yeah. hire you and you're like, oh, there yeah. wasn't my hire, and then they make you be the one. That That's happens. terrible. It happens. HR is so tricky. I was talking with a guy yesterday. He's a very high-level executive at a bank. And he, you know who you are. It's me. He uh, <laughs> he said, when you are actually letting somebody go, there are certain things. So they would bring multiple people in the room to do it with them. So you have multiple yep. witnesses. Yep. You have to say a few things. It cannot be, you can't even say, and they're like, listen, I'm really sorry about this. You can't say that. You can't say, um, you know, you, you meant a lot to us. You can't, they're not, they, you have to hit things exactly that. Because if you go, if you were to, it's basically like you're inferring that, hey, this was our fault, not your fault. There's so many things yeah. you can and can't say. Can't do that. It's tricky. Yeah. They, they brought somebody in from HR with him to say two sentences. That was all they had to say. They had because legally they had to say those sentences, and then that person was asked to leave, and they brought in somebody else to keep the interview wow. or the the dismissal going, which it's, is crazy. It's different for educators. Um, you actually have to follow something called the Teacher Fair Dismissal Act, and well, so like you have to do like it's like T- six the months. TFDA. We don't call it that, but you could. Okay, you'd be Tifta. people would look at you like a weirdo. Hey, you, you make a out, weirdo. Want to fill out this Tifta? Tifta. But yeah, that's what I always tell people. The most important thing any principal or administrator does in a school district is hire people because you oh. are not just like, oh, I'm hiring somebody to fill this role for next year. It is so difficult to get rid of people. You're true. hiring someone else's problems. For life. You're hiring something that administrators years after you're gone are going to have to deal with from somebody. Man. And so it's like you're, you're, and that's, you're dealing with who's, you're hiring who's going to educate students, hundreds if not thousands of students. Like, it's a big that's, deal. That's yeah, a lot of influence. And again, it's it's different, you know, with different jobs, but that's the one I've experienced with. So that's the one I want to talk about. So what? let's go through some tips and tricks. What, what and do you think the percentages are on somebody who, okay, so there was a study that was done. 2,000 business level executives in an HR department that hire people in, they were, they were uh, polled. What do you think the percentage is on the amount of people that say within 90 seconds they know whether they're going to hire that person or not? Oh, I, I'd say 80 Eighty to ninety percent. Oh wow, your your numbers are higher than theirs. Oh well, they, they basically said it was like thirty three percent of them said they knew within ninety seconds. Oh, I could tell you that. I would say it's a lot higher than that. I would say too, because I mean that's the thing you don't get. We'll say that usually you don't get to that level of leadership right. or like the ability right. to hire or fire people unless you're good at reading and you know writing and arithmetic. Facil- <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> reading, writing, arithmetic. Uh, I'm from Ohio. So what? You, whoa! <laughs> That's how people in Ohio. Talk. Well, hello there. Hi, I'm from Ohio. Can I have some pop? <laughs> so uh, <laughs> what, that's our trademark. What is in Ohio? I'm oh, from Ohio. Neil. A lot I've of people heard, don't know that. Heard a lot about this. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's time to go home. <laughs> it is very important when you walk in the doors that you can spot certain things. What yep. should you be? What should you think about your appearance, the way that you're acting, and all that kind of stuff? What are things that, that interviewers are looking for? Well, one, you're looking to make sure they look clean. Clean. Um, not I'm, drunk. I'm cleaning this. Had a guy come in an interview once. Pretty sure he had been drinking a lot. He was Ooh. sweating everywhere. Which also, side note, if someone takes you out for lunch uh, or for dinner during an interview or for a second follow-up interview, do not 
order any of the alcohol or whatever is out yeah. there. You'd be shocked at how many people do that. Huge mistake. Huge, yeah. huge mistake. Keep going. They're Sorry. testing you. Um, I look, their appearance, how they conduct themselves. Eye contact is huge. Um, yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. No, sir. No, ma'am. You know, yep. like all... All the stuff that people should know up front. You would think. You do not have to address me like that on the day-to-day basis. I don't expect you to walk through the hall and go, hello, Mr. Tarver, it's great to see you. Yes, sir. Right. Like, no, but I know that Which you know. because you've been making me do that, say that to you well, every Neil, time. Well, Neil, you started off kind of rough. <laughs> you cussed at me and you talked okay. about when you were in the clink, and I, I was like, this is not appropriate. I think we all know my stance on the cussers. <laughs> so, so if, uh, if somebody's coming in and they don't, they, they, uh, they're, they're saying yeah to you as opposed to yes or yes, sir. Does that matter? It it doesn't. For me, it depends. That one I'm not going to rank your whole interview on. It's okay. not going to be as big of a motivator. I'm a millennial, Neil. Man. So it doesn't bother me as bad. I'm okay with casual. However, I do like to know that you can conduct yourself in front of a parent or like another adult. Like oh, right. I need to know that you can right. handle and be professional when you need to be. Yes. And if any time is to be professional, it's then. So honestly, it's not going to be your make or break. It is something I'm going to take into consideration. Yeah, I think so. So uh, body language says a lot. Yeah, what do you think is like, what would be a good indicator if somebody would be like, all right, this person's doing well. What's a good indicator for body language? Well, I think smiling. Is yeah, that's good. Important. I like being I mean, smiling is good. I think not fidgeting. Yeah. Uh, not having your arms crossed, arms folded. That says I'm very defensive. So where do I put my hands? Up in the air. Just like I just don't care. Like just, <laughs> all the women who are independent, throw your hands up in the The roof is on fire. <laughs> We just hit three songs in like four seconds. That's it didn't a record. Take much long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Endless movie quotes. Endless movie quotes. Those are our songs. So uh, I think that what do you do with your hands? You could fold your hands. You could put them on your lap. You could put whatever. I think uh, uh, like like fidgeting, like nervous yeah. ticks, nervous yeah. movements, all that kind of stuff is is no good. No. Uh, leaning forward, leaning a little bit instead of leaning way back in the chair. I would say lean a little bit forward. Yep. That says that I'm interested, but yep. not like so far forward that you're like, wow, you're you're. Leadership Lean In, man. Yeah. Chad Veach okay. podcast. Chad Veach cast. Veach, Veach cast. That's the name of his podcast. Uh, well, let me think about some other ones. So um, I think eye contact. That's big. Huge. Yeah. Know that you're not going to look at me like you just did a drug deal and you don't want me to find out. Like, seriously. <laughs> walk in and shake my hand. That's another thing. Dude. One thing a lot of people miss when they walk in the room, because usually we would have anywhere from three to eight people in the room for interviews. Right. Walk in, shake everyone's hand. Okay. Say hello, ask their name, and make eye contact. That's one oh one. And you have people that are come you in and just think. be like, Hey. No. Hey guys. Hey uh, everybody. And sad. I get if you're gonna make a joke, like if you're like late or if they're in a hurry or whatever, but sad. honestly I still think go around the room. It shows every single person in the room they're important to you. I think that's right. So uh, a good handshake goes a long way. Yes, it does. Oh, don't give me no floppy fish. No. Gross. Gross. Don't do that. Now what if you if pull no... out an actual floppy fish, oh yeah. That's funny. Sure. I can live with that. Man. You should do that. You should, hey, I'm not really good at handshakes, so I wanted to give you this. <laughs> and it's a live fish. Yeah, it just... It's, <laughs> fish. It's, one, it's one of those Billy Mouth Big Bass things. So, uh, you know what? I worked at a wholesale marine products place. <laughs> that was no joke on the wall. Yeah, of course it big was. Big Mouth Billy Bass. Big, big Billy Mouth Bass. No, that's one way to do it. Okay. If you want to be wrong. Uh, I think um, if you were going to print something out, how many copies of that should you bring? Enough for everybody in the room, but it all should be on one page. Or, ooh. Oh, Don't give me no page. packet. Wow. That's probably smart. If you can do one page, great. I understand it. that doesn't always fit on one page, but you can we, do a one page summary. Here's to be honest. They're not going to read. This is another thing. I, I like a tip. I tell teachers, you are going to have a subtitle. Oh, so whenever you're interviewing, if we interview for an um, elementary job, we're going to interview 10 to 20 people for that job. Mm-hmm. Normally I say that usually between five and 15. I don't know why it does number doesn't matter. We're going to interview a lot of people. Your names are going to run together. Oh, it's Jeff Green and Billy Bass and like whoever, Neil Greathouse, Tyler Tarver. All the names start running Tom together. Tomlinson. What you do is in that room, you will develop a subtitle. So whenever they're recapping, who did you guys like? I like the lady from you know oh, right, Arkansas Tech right. University, or I like the mm-hmm. guy who goes fishing on the weekends. You're going to be remembered for something from your interview. Wow. And so what I always tell people is control your narrative. So one that I always did whenever I would interview was I would throw out the fact that, hey, I was on Tosh.0 on Comedy Central. So now that's the most like... They'll remember. I doubt they're going to have anyone else come in that's going to mm-hmm. say that. That's the way I'm going to be remembered and I controlled it. I'm not like, hey, there's the guy that, you know, walked down the street and peed on a raccoon or something. I don't know. <laughs> Why would I put that on my resume? I want that. Uh, depends on the job. On my team <laughs> right now. Book him. Book Tell everybody him. else to go home. 
He's blind in one eye. Tell, <laughs> <laughs> tell the guy who's going to go for a, an hour and a half. Uh, tell him to stay out there. Yeah, he'll still be sitting there looking at newspapers. So papers. give him one sheet of paper. Uh, don't print off an entire ream of them. Just yep. give enough. Know how many people are in the room. Know who is going to be in the room. Do a little bit of research on them and the company that you're going to work for. Oh, that's a big deal. That is a big deal. Whenever you come into the room, know about the people you're interviewing with. Yeah. Like do some, don't just be like, oh, it's just another job. That was one of the, whenever I worked at a, a school district, uh, it was called Boxite. And we would ask, one of the questions was, why Boxite? Why do you want to work here? Yeah. And there were people that were like, well, it's a closer drive. Or, <laughs> oh my that, gosh. They would say that sometimes. For real. It happened more than you would think. That's like, sad. it's like, seriously, I know you don't have an answer prep, but don't just give me that. Don't be like, oh, well, some are like, I've researched the district. I want my kids to go here, and oh, I would love to work. With like a I get B. that. Like yeah, he's my favorite. Letter. I don't have to scroll that far in the zip codes. <laughs> like what in the world? Oh my gosh. Like and that's that's that the thing. If tough. you come in and you know, like, hey, I love how you guys do this, or I love how you promote this, or I love what you've done here. That shows that you want to be here for more than just like, oh, I just need to get paid. Yeah, uh, that's Im that's important. Uh, yep. They at some point they will almost every good interview will almost inevitably ask you, hey. Do you have any questions for us? Yeah. Do you do you prep that? Do you have good questions done ahead of time? Should uh, they yeah. watch and find out how Sean does it on on Hot Wings? Isn't that isn't that his name? <laughs> hot ones. Hot ones. Hot wings. Whatever it's called. Yeah. yeah it's like ha no good questions. Have like, good don't questions. Just, don't just give a question that's like a yes no answer. No. Hey, don't, do you don't, like your job? Don't say this. Don't go. When do I start? <laughs> 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 Oh my gosh! You got a ten or twenty minute smoke break. <laughs> I've had people ask me that. Well, that church, and you said as long as you want because you're not working here. Whoa! Wow. Okay, so question. So mm -hmm. you you for the past twelve years you've worked at a, at a church. I okay? have. Yes, and yes. it's one that I would assume you know a lot of people that get connected and get to see the mm -hmm. atmosphere would want to work there. Yep. But you don't necessarily post jobs on like a website where you can apply very often. It's more like. We have people serving in these roles, and at some point, you're like, well, right. let's offer them a job, or right. let's see if they want to come on part-time, or whatever it is. Correct. So, what would be your advice to people if it's a company like that that doesn't post jobs very often? How can they go about letting people know, hey, I'm interested in working here? Keep me in mind if so-and-so comes up, or open, or whatever. Well, I would say uh, we, so at the organization that we currently work at, uh, we don't hire a position, we hire a person. And That's I was good. told that really early on. What ends up happening is if, uh, like, the the way my supervisors would always say it to me is, I would if I would say, hey, uh, we really need to hire somebody for this position. We're we're understaffed, under man. We need help or whatever. They would say, do you have a person in mind? If we ever said no, they knew that we weren't ready to hire yet because we didn't have a person ready. I would say go do whatever you can to be involved on that team, to be involved in that business at the best of your ability and capacity and volunteer and serve so that when the time does come and they say, yeah, can, you can go ahead and hire somebody, they have a name of a person that they want to hire as opposed to, now you still have to, legally, you still have to go through the whole process by submitting everything and, yeah. and it has to go through the whole process. But I would say just be the person that is a, it's a no brainer. They know who they would want to hire. Yeah. No matter what the role is, they know you're going to add value to your team. Right. Now, obviously other people are, some people are better with experience and skill yeah. sets, degrees right. to be on certain roles, but I, I also say, don't, 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 uh, this is extra. You didn't ask me this. No, I'm asking. Don't be that person who says, I just want to get my foot in the door so I could eventually get the job that I want there. Yeah. It is better if you just, it just don't do that. Cause then you're going to be miserable on that spot. Yeah. I get that. Everybody else is miserable too. Yeah. They all can't stand you. you. You know why? He's blind in one eye. Oh, <laughs> I was ready. Oh, I let him I was into ready. that one. Let him into it. Uh, is anybody sleep here? Mm -mm. Okay, cool. I was ready. Ooh. <laughs> wow. Uh, sorry. I just had to feel it. All right. Uh, I think we pretty much covered a lot of the do's and don'ts. Yeah. Um, there's a couple extra ones that we have in here that are things like, hey, don't take in more than one thing in your hands. It's good. Don't take a coat, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, half of a uncooked hamburger patty, -uh. and, and like a bunch of this is weird. Just, just take one thing in your hands. Can I tell you a secret about me? Yes. I used to have this weird thing in my head <laughs> growing up. I'm so ready for this. Uh, this is so weird. I had some weird stuff. We can talk about that later. But like this, I used to think anytime I went somewhere like a camp, if I'm staying overnight, anywhere I went, I still kind of do. I need to take as little as possible. I have underpacked for oh, so much I, stuff. I could see this because easily. I 
I, in my brain, I always like, I don't know. I didn't look down on people that took too much, but I would just be like, Overpackers. I just I thought it was gross. Like, why would you bring so much? <laughs> but I would gross? always inevitably have like three days too few of clothes because I was that's like not gross. And I would try to keep it as compact as possible. I don't know why. Like, flipping there's no your, good reason. Flipping your underwear inside out so you wear it again. Yeah, I don't know. Why? No. Why? Why? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why I did that. I've seen you take uh, far less than what I thought you would take. Now, I'm not an overpacker. Yeah. I take exactly what I need and enough diabetes supplies to help me get through the night. In case <laughs> pretty good. But just honestly, I just, I try not to over, I, just, I can't, I can't stand yeah. having too much. I try to pack out like, Hey, this is tomorrow. This is the next day, next day. And then usually a couple extra pairs of whatever I need. If I can't fit it in a trapper keeper, I don't take it with me. Oh, if it's not, that's why I only pack a trapper keeper <laughs> inside of another trapper keeper. Whoa. Yeah. Like a day planner trapper keeper inside of that's a regular like three ring binder trapper keeper. wishes. Well, man, you get three wishes. Axel, can't, stacks, axel, stacks. Can't ask for more. <laughs> this is getting so weird. Shred and cheddar. People that are like, I want to know how to do an interview. We're coming. Yep. Okay, Neil, yes. I'm asking this because I already got my answer. Okay. What are the wow. three things? <laughs> yeah, it's very honest of yeah, you. Yeah, man. Well, I'm not gonna play no games. Okay. No, I don't want. I said that hmm. chapel today. I go, hey, don't be a scrub. We don't want no scrubs. Yeah. Did they a know? A scrub is a guy. Who thinks did he's they fun. know what you're talking about? Oh yeah, about four of them. Did, did you ask him at some point? Did you slow things down? And you look right at him and you say, listen, if you had. One shot. One, shot. <laughs> One opportunity. Oh, my gosh. Would you let us... Mom's you spaghetti. Let us okay. Hey, What's what are three characteristics, the top three characteristics you look for in an employee? Uh, their previous work history and how long they stayed there. Okay, so you value longevity. I value that you didn't work 40 jobs like I did. <laughs> <laughs> It's Still just would too, not hire it's a, no no now I will say that you get experience but what that says is I'm unsettled and I'm probably not going to last long here so here's my question because this is a something that people talk about a lot um you know, that, that there would be an interview room a lot because okay. people would bring up like I don't think they'll be here more than a couple years mm -hmm. is would you rather have somebody there for 30 years who's going to be okay or would you rather have somebody great for three years I would rather have somebody great for three years at the position they're going to be in and stay at our company and go up oh, from there. What if what if you don't have anywhere for them to move up from there? If, if they're a great person, then that's fine. Okay, so if I'm somebody okay came in, that. they're a dynamo, they make stuff better. I don't think less than a year is worth anybody's time anywhere. No, I don't either. It usually, they say statistically it takes two years to get somebody really rolling in their roles. Yeah, I, I would say I would take the three-year person over the 30 if they're just looking for a position. I want somebody who knows that they're going to bring value and whatever, but they themselves. So, so at the end of the day, it's uh, I guess it's probably the second one that they have a self awareness that they are continuing to sharpen themselves, they are continuing to get better, and they are not waiting on someone else to help develop them. They are taking that personally. That's good on themselves. Yeah, I said that in an interview or not interview. <laughs> I was interviewing yesterday. Whoa! Yikes! Hot take. No, I was talking to um, some new hires about culture, and I said that I said, uh, "Yeah, our organization is going to grow." And develop and if you don't do that you're gonna be left behind i didn't make that up but i passed yeah. it off like i did that's good that's smart thanks man i didn't make it up but i passed it off like i did <laughs> <laughs> there i said it twice how about I'm you clean. what are your three did you say your third one that's germs but you it doesn't two. matter <laughs> <laughs> so you do a germ count all right no, put the I, swab in your fingertips just, oh gosh those uh, and then you put it in your awful. mouth and you taste oh. you're like counting the germs <laughs> <laughs> that's oh. terrible okay so, hold on. I'm getting a call from Apple. I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, my kidding. gosh. I'm joking. Abil Abil that was terrible. Ability to focus, I would say, is a really good one. Let me go. All right. So, my three things that I always look for in an employee, a potential employee, mm -hmm. are I need them to be intelligent. And that doesn't mean you have to be the smartest person. It doesn't mean you have to have a bunch of degrees. It means that you have to be able to learn. There are some people that yeah. they'll put up a wall and be like, well, I can't learn that. Or I, it's not, I'm not, not a tech person. It's or over. I can't do this. You have to be able to learn. And that's what I mean by intelligent. Second, you have to be hardworking. Okay? Because I think if you're intel partially intelligent and you'll work hard, that'll take you way farther than being yeah. just so and so smart. Right. There's so much in life you can do. Just be hardworking. Like if you're going to work hard okay. at something, I can help train you and point you in the right direction. So intelligent, right. hardworking. Okay. And the third thing, and this is kind of cheating because I think it, it envelops a lot of characteristics. Your personality has to match. I'm not saying you have to be, oh, you got to be right. outgoing or right. you got to put on a show. No, that, that might not be the role for you. 
but your personality has to mesh with the people that you're going to be working with. I agree. Or I will be wasting my time mending stuff the whole time because you can't get along with with. anybody. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, personality, hardworking and intelligent. If, If you had to pick one out of those three, which one is it? Oh gosh, that's tough. Um, personality. I, I just think like really? I can, I you can could set, be a dingus and not a hard worker. If you have the right personality, you could work. Yeah. I, I could find a role for you. Okay. I mean, but I say that because if you're intelligent or hardworking, but your personality is something nobody yeah, wants to be yeah, around. Right, right. Right. Like I'm going to want to let you go the whole time. Like it's, I'm, it's a, it's, it affects everyone around you. If you're not hardworking or you, you don't have a, the right intelligence, like, yeah, it's going to affect your job, but if you have a bad personality, yeah, it's yeah. going to affect everybody else, yeah. and nobody's going to be around our organization. Ain't got no friends. I, you know what? I think it is rare to get all three of those. It's true. It is rare. I think it's rare. That's why I hire those people. Tyler, you're one of those kind of people. That hire those people? No, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it is it, it, it is very difficult. So even when we said like a, a, a self-awareness that you're going to develop yourself, when you're what you're saying with personality too is your own personality awareness of how you impact and work well with other people is yep. huge because if you don't understand that you are steamrolling people you are you're not going to last long exactly somewhere. and exactly. if you're in a position where you're up at the very top nobody wants to work for you yep. versus the other way around yeah it's good neil it's insightful tyler so good this is a 40 said. minute podcast <laughs> well about 20 minutes of it there is, oh, i'm gonna uh, get cut out it's gosh. gonna be available on patreon.com so i explain everything right in case you're just now joining us uh we had a bit of a snafu, snafu. There, why would they the just join us the last two minutes of the podcast well they like to skip it to, uh, to the end where they know that we're going to talk about our patreon page they read and we're going to read uh wow yeah yep no we don't have time to read any reviews we did get a new one though it was good I believe you. I That's what they you. said. It was good. <laughs> <laughs> it good. It good. No punctuation, all lowercase. All lowercase. Speaking of lowercase, Joseph hit him with that outro. We have outro music? Yeah, he's blinding. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Thanks for coming to my TED Talk. Bye.